now another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours starring Lee Tracy and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. A story of men and ships, eh, Lee? Right, Ken, of men, their ships, and a treacherous business. We'll be ready for the first act in just a moment after your brief but very important message. Can you hold down a man's job? If the answer is yes, there's a man's job for you in our fast-growing United States Army. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for full details. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Matt, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of The Wreckers. <laughs> During the middle of the last century, along lonely bits of jagged coastline, a practice that had been known since ancient times was still carried on. For lack of a better name, we'll call it wrecking. Wrecking was the organized art of luring a ship off its course and letting it crash on the rocks. It was a vicious combination of piracy and highway robbery, for wreckers had one hard and fast law, dead men tell no tales. This was a dangerous and evil game, played by men who placed great value on what they could get off a stricken ship before she broke up, but no value on human life. It was such a band that held sway in the Florida Keys back in the days of the Clippers. Captain Morris! Ahoy! Captain Morris! Ahoy! Captain, you've changed course. That's right, Mr. Adams. Don't want to put her on the rock. Captain, the wind hasn't veered that much. We hold this pack, we'll pile up on shark reefs. Mr. Adams, you need rest. Now look there, just after the port beam. Watch and you'll see the light on the point. We've weathered shark reefs. See it there? Aye, sir, but it's not right. I can't disagree with my eyes, nor can you. Captain, I know these waters that Captain light. Captain, hey, 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 Tom, where were you all night? Out with some friends. Now, mind your own business, Nan. You think I'm dumb just because I'm your sister, don't you? No, you're just nosy. Bossy, too. You think ever since Mom and Dad died that you've got to take care of me like I was some kid. It's none of your business what I do, Nan. It's just that I don't want to see you get into trouble. I wish you weren't so friendly with Flynn. And what's the matter with him? He's been mighty good to me. He gave me a job. Doing what? What do you care as long as the money's good? I know what I hear and I know what other people say. If any of the money you bring me isn't honest money, I don't want any of it. Well, what do you hear? People don't say much. They're afraid to. They're afraid of Finn. I wish we'd stayed in Homestead and hadn't come down here. I, I don't know what it is, but there's something wrong going on, and that man Finn is behind it. Well, stop imagining things. I'm tired. I'm going back to the house and get some sleep. Tom, won't you tell me Hey, what... hey, hey, look down there. It looks like, like a man. You... You'd better wait here. He, he may be dead. Well, he can't hurt me if he is. Come on, he may be alive, too. No, we... we... Tom, let go of my wrist. What's the matter with you? I, I was just thinking maybe we'd better go back to town and get help. Help? Help for what? Let's see if he needs help first. <laughs> he looks like he was washed up on the shore. Well, I'm sure it didn't just grow there. You'd better let me go first. Is he... is he dead? I can't tell. I think so. Have to roll him over. There. He, he must be a sailor. Cold as a mackerel. See if I can find any papers. Are, are you sure that oh, he... Here's a wallet. Slightly watered log. Here, spread the papers on the sand. Looks like a good one. Let's see. Yeah. Matthew, Matthew Adams. There is made papers. Oh, I wonder how the poor man ever came to be here. We'll never know. Perhaps he fell overboard or something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tom, uh, Tom, he's alive. Alive, but... Come on, we've got to try and save him. Get a fire built. Well, don't just stand there like you've seen a ghost. The man's alive. Has he come out of it yet? No, he's hardly budged all day. 
I got some soup into him. I hope he doesn't get attached to my bed. I don't know why you have to be such a good Samaritan anyway. What did you want to do? Leave him there on the shore? Sometimes you make me sick with your selfishness. We could have taken him into town and... Go, go fishing, will you, Tom? Well, as soon as he's on his feet, he'll have to get out. We don't have room here for... Hard, any... hard to starboard. Mm, that's all he said, and, and something about rocks. Well, what's the matter? Uh, nothing. I'm... I'm going into town. And tell your friend Finn all about it? I... I may do just that. Well, where... Where, where am I? You're all right, Mr. Adams. We found you on the shore and brought you here. Uh, I... I don't understand what... What ha happened. Can't you recall? Cap Morse said... And then, rocks. Oh. What place is this? This is Boca Chica. Shark Reef. That's right. It's off the headland. There's a light there? Yes, yes. It's a very bad place for Who ships. tends for the light? Oh, a man named Finn runs things here. He'd have to tell you. Why? What's your name, girl? Nancy McRae. Oh, I owe you my life, Nancy McRae. I'm in your debt. How, how did you know my name? We found your papers. Who's we? My brother Tom and I. We were out walking. I see. Where is he now? He went into town. He'll be back later. I suppose he'll talk about this, about you finding me alive. Knowing Tom, I wouldn't doubt it. Especially to Finn. Who is this Finn? I don't know who he is. I know I don't like him. He's a great big man and people are afraid of him. What's he do for a living? He seems to run things. You know, if your brother talks about me, my life will be in great danger. In danger? But, but why? Because... I remember how I got here. It's horrible. Too horrible to believe. More than one ship has disappeared without trace in this area. But why? It's a way of getting rich. If you don't care how many people you kill doing it. I knew there was something, but I... Tom? Mr. Adams is feeling better. So I see. How do you do? How do you do? I thank your sister. I'll thank you. No need. Tom, did you tell Finn about Mr. Adams? I... I didn't go into town. I walked. Oh. I'll take it as a kindness if you didn't tell anyone about this. Why? My ship was lured on the Shark Reef last night by wreckers. All hands but me were lost. Those who didn't go down with her when she broke up were shot when they tried to get to shore. When I saw what was happening, I took my chances in the sea. I had luck. Why, that's, that's, that's... Whatever it is, there must be those hereabouts who had a hand in it. You can see how much my life would be worth if any of them came to know there was a survivor. Well, what... What do you plan to do? Your sister tells me there's a packet that stops here next week. I'll lie low until she does. Then I'll be off for the mainland and the authorities. But how can you prove all this? I'll prove it if I have to take this island apart. And I'll find the guilty parties, too. I'll see him hanging from a yard arm before this is done. What do you want? You'd best keep your voice down, Tom McGray. To think that, that you, my own brother, there's no good denying it. You're a murderer, the worst kind of murderer. May God have more mercy on you than you had on those poor men. I, I couldn't help it, man. Oh. I didn't know it was that... Finn told me they were going to have a bit of sport. I never realized, man. You've got to believe me. When finally I knew what they'd planned, I was too frightened to do anything. I knew they'd kill me if I tried to get away. I had to stay there and see the whole dirty thing. It was horrible. Horrible. You didn't... didn't have a hand in it? Oh, not the killing, I swear it. Finn made me help carry some of her cargo off before she went down. What am I going to do, man? I'm the one who always has to pull you out of your scrapes. I told you he was an evil man when we came here, but you, you'd have none of it. I could mind my own business, and I should say it served you right. Oh, Tom, when are you going to start being a man? Well, how did I know that was his way of getting rich? All right, I'll tell you what you're going to do, and you're going to do it right now. You're going to tell Mr. Adams and hope he doesn't strangle you with his bare hands. And then if you can, you're going to help him catch the others, even if you go to jail for it. How many in the gang? About 20. Could you give me their names? Some, not all. 
There was someone I'd never seen before. This Finn, he's the leader. Oh, he runs everything around here. He'd kill me if he knew I told you this. Blame yourself for that. There's no ships in here until the packet comes. Does anything go out before that? Not unless Finn knows about it. Suppose I was your cousin. Could I come here without anyone knowing? Not likely. Why? Because I want to meet this Finn. I don't want him suspicioning where I came from. He suspicions all strangers. He doesn't like them here. If they're smart, they don't stay around. If I laid low and when the packet arrives, say I'd come off that, would he? He knows who comes on and off the packet. Uh, he's got things well organized. Oh, not much gets by him. He's got a man named Slick who goes about with him. He's a great ugly devil, mean as a snake. I've seen Finn sick him on a man as though he was a dog. If you showed your face in town like as not, you'd not last long. No law and order here. Finn's the law. And it's time the law was changed. Well, you can't beat a whole gang. You'd be a fool to try. Never mind who's the fool. Just remember you've never seen me before. And perhaps I'll try and forget what I know about you. What's the matter, you deaf? I said, where do I find a man named Finn? No need to shout at Johnny there, matey. What business you got with Mr. Finn? Certainly none of yours. If you're looking Mr. Finn, it is. Oh, I see. Uh, you're Finn, huh? Mr. Finn. I don't believe in formality. Then I may have to change your beliefs before long. Who are you? How did you get here, and what do you want? Name is Matt, and it's none of your business how I got here, and what I want will have to be said in private. Stranger, I don't like the cut of your jib, and I don't like your manners. I think you need to be taught that this is a peaceable and respectable place, and we don't like bully boys storming in off the quarterdeck and flapping their canvas before all hands. Mr. Slick, would you attend to the lesson? With pleasure, Mr. Finn. I've been feeling in the need of exercise. Ah, uh, uh, you, you got you got any more lessons you want to teach, Finn? Maybe I'll give give you one for good measure. <laughs> Slack off, matey. Any man that can keel whole slick is a man I'll drink with. Johnny, let's have a tot all around. <laughs> Now, me bucko, what's on your mind? I'm looking for a job. I don't have any love for ships or the men that sail on them. I ain't at all particular about the work as long as the pay is good. Why come to me? A man named Marquisa in Key West. He thought it might be a good idea. Ah, you don't say. What do you know of Marquisa? Marquisa's a trader. He trades all sorts of things that come to him. He's not particular where they come from. How'd you get here? Schooner on her way to Rock Harbor dropped me off last night. You know, in my business, I can always use a man like you. I'll sign you on, Matt. But in the meantime, I'll do a little checking. Now, if you're square, you've got a good berth here. If you're not, if you're a snooper... I promise you, you'll be shark baited before the week's out. Now drink up, man, and we'll have another for luck. Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Matt Adams in the proudly we hail production of The Wreckers, will return in just a moment for the second act. You young men who graduated from high school in the class of 51, listen to this. There's real opportunity for you and our growing United States Army, and you can continue your education, too. You see, the Army gives its soldiers the finest technical training in the world. Today's soldiers go to excellent schools where they learn to do their jobs right. What's more, you can even get a college degree through USAFI, the United States Armed Forces Institute. And because our Army is expanding so rapidly, promotions come fast, for there's lots of room at the top. You'll lead an interesting, healthy life, too, and work side by side with other intelligent young Americans. Remember, an army uniform today is the mark of a man. If you think you can fill a man's shoes, go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and find out what the army has to offer you. Enlist today.
You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Matt Adams, we present the second act of The Wreckers. <laughs> Matt Adams. We're going to have a blow. It's that season. Luck for me. What do you mean? I met Finn and Slick. I used the name you gave me. It worked until he checked. He can't put out the Key West in this. Tom, I want... Oh, Mr. Adams, you startled me. Evening, ma'am. I'm just telling your brother. Hey, Tom! Open up! Come with me quickly. Easy does it now, Tom. Uh, coming. Just a second, Mr. Finn. Even, lad. Where's that pretty sister of yours? She, uh, well, she'll be right back. Back? What's she doing out on a night like this? Well, I mean, she's out in the back. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter? Slick uh, look a mite changed. Tell the lad how you got your face stove in, Slick. I'll settle that lubber's hash before I'm through. <laughs> Slick was always one to bear a grudge. Lad, I, I've been worried about you. I haven't seen you in town. You've you been sick? Well, I... I haven't been feeling so well. Well, now, that's too bad. What you need is some good sea air in your lungs and a job to do. Isn't that so, Slick? Aye. No better time than tonight. Tonight? But but what, lad? Well, I, I, I'd rather not. He'd rather not, Slick. What do you think of that? I could change his mind. Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. Be at the cove in an hour, Tom, lad. It's a good night for work, and... Give my respects to your charming sister. Sometimes I have the feeling she doesn't take to me, but I'm a patient man. In an hour, Tom. If this is the kind of luck you usually have, we'll all starve. No fear of that. It's getting light. And we'd better put out the fire. Lad, you begin to worry me. I have the feeling that your heart isn't in the work. I'd hate to lose you. Young welts are no good at man's work. Tom, take a couple of the other boys and put out the fire. Tom, did you hear me? Yes. Yes. Well, then, get at it. If you take a word from a man who knows. I've been watching that jellyfish. I'd not trust him. No, and what would you do about it? Accidents can happen. Well, I have a mind you're right. Would you like to tend to it? What do I do, or whatever I do, I get paid for. <laughs> You're a hard man, matey. Suppose you, suppose you to walk out there and help them with putting out the fire, and the lad slipped and fell into the sea. No, I have no witnesses to my work. I'll follow him when we're done here. Good enough. See that you don't botch it. I never botch anything, Finn. I'll be on my way. Pleasant dreams. Good night, Matt. Flick. Follow him and don't let him out of your sight. I'll have my knife between his... Billy, there. You keep your knife where it belongs unless I tell you otherwise. Just follow him, understand? Tom! Tom! Hold on. Oh, thank God there were no ships. Amen to that. The wind has shifted. By noon, Finn will be able to send his sloop to Key West. We don't have much time. What can we do? The first thing I'm going to do is kill you. Huh? Ha! <laughs> Not really. Come on, come on. Keep walking. Do you know a place on this island where you could hide? Well, caves. Where are they? Those cliffs there are honeycombed with them. All right. I'll tell your sister and... Keep you supplied with food. Now, you're not to move until I come for you. What are you going to do? I'm going to try and save both our lives. But I don't know how much luck I'm going to have. Let's have a look at this one here. It's got a narrow opening, but it seems to widen out. Ah, there's a light... Coming from a hole up there, somewhere. Matt, look. Ah. Do you, do you know what this is? It's Finn's storehouse. It's where he hides, what he steals. That chest there, and those bags that came off my ship. How is it you didn't know about this? It's 
told me to go home before they took what they'd gotten off the ship away. Look at it all. I suppose he takes a bit of it at a time to Key West. I think we'd better find you another cave up higher where you can watch this place. Come along. There's plenty roomy, Tom. You shouldn't be too uncomfortable, and you can watch down there without being seen up here. You'd better go back and tell Nat. I'll do that, and later I'll bring you some food <laughs> and a book or two. I just want to say, Nat, that... What? Slick, look out, he's got a knife. I figured you for a dirty spy. Now I'll settle that score. Keep away, Tom. How is this? Not good enough. Look out, man. He's trying to force you over the edge. Oh! I know you know where Tom is. Now, calm yourself, ma'am. I don't keep watch on the lad. How could I know where he is? He went out last night, and I know he went to see you. Here it is midday, and there's no sign of him yet. What have you done with him? <laughs> I like your spirit, lad. You do me ill to think that I'd harm your brother. Tom's a good lad, and I like him. If he doesn't show up by nightfall, I'll have some of the boys have a look for him. Now, I've got business in town. Mr. Slick will be looking for me. And good day to you, lass. <laughs> Nancy, Matt Adams. How do you know where Tom is? No need to fear. He's in a safe place. But, but what happened? I don't have much time now. Don't make a light. It's, it's better just like this. I want you to do something for me. The packet is due to arrive tomorrow. When she comes, you go aboard her and find the captain. Give him this letter. You know the cliff just around the point? Yes. She'll want you to show him how to find them. What are you planning to do? Well, this is the way it stands now. I think... Where you been? All day. Where you been? Taking care of your business. It's good somebody is. What do you mean? You underestimated that lad. No wonder he acted so gutless. I followed him when he left. He didn't go home. He led me to some cliff. What? But how the devil did... Go on. There were a lot of caves in the cliff. He entered one and he thought it better not to follow. After a while, he came out lugging a chest. A rock broke loose where I was standing. He spotted me. I went for him, but he dropped the chest, ran back in the cave. I started to follow. When he shouted, he had a gun, and he'd shoot me. I saw no reason to doubt his word, so I just piled up some big boulders in front of the entrance so he couldn't get out. Then who should show up but Slick? He'd seen the whole thing. What's the matter, Finn? Don't you trust me? Get on with the story. Well, that's about all there is. Slick and I spent the day trying to get him out. And Slick suggested I come get you. He said, you'd probably like to settle with McRae yourself. I Slick was right. I'll tear his throat out with my bare hands. I don't understand Slick not being here. Slick, ahoy! He's probably around somewhere. No matter, the entrance is still blocked. Now hold the torch and I'll clear it. You try to come in here, I'll kill you. I mean it. He didn't have a gun when he went in, and I know there aren't any in there. Nice place for a storehouse, Finn. Put in your hat. There, now. Shall I go in first, or will you? Follow me. I'm coming to get you, Tom. Say your prayers, you scurvy little bilge rat. Got that gun, Finn. Make one move, and I'll blow a hole in your back. Get the torch, Tom, quick. Right. The gun, Finn. Pick it up, Tom. All right. Now, just stand aside and keep the torch burning. What's got into you, matey? Maybe you better... Now, get up. I can't kill you. The authorities will take care of that, but I'm going to beat you within an inch of your life. I was first mate on the Wanderer, Finn. She was a ship you sank last week with all hands. All hands except me. You've reached the end of your dirty rope. And before they hang you Look with out. it. Come and get it, Finn. Oh, that's good, Tom. It's all right, man. Yeah, fine. Well, you sure did a job on him. They'll carry him out of there. 
Now, why don't you let me stay here all night? You get some rest. I wouldn't leave here for anything. When the captain from the packet gets here, I want to hand over Finn and all the evidence in there with him. But what'll happen then? I mean... Don't worry, Tom. If I have anything to say about it, you won't go to jail. You can bet I'll have plenty to say. I hope you learned your lesson. You and your sister will be smart to get back to the mainland. Then I could keep an eye on you. <laughs> Especially uh, your sister. <laughs> I wonder if she'd think it presumptuous of me if, uh, if I called her <laughs> Nancy. Why don't you try and find out? Well, <laughs> I think I will. Tomorrow after we've said goodbye to Finn and his friends. Hey, from the looks of the sky up there and the feel of the wind, I'd say it was going to be a nice day tomorrow. Yeah, mighty nice. Our star, Lee Tracy, will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. I have a message of interest to all young men who graduated from high school this year. Listen to this. The United States Army needs intelligent young men to handle the thousands of important jobs now opening up in our growing army. If you can qualify for one of the Army's many technical training schools and come within this quota, you'll study such interesting subjects as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, or electronics. And then you'll have the know-how it takes to get ahead faster. What's more, when you're in the United States Army, you'll wear with pride the uniform that's the mark of a man. So don't worry about what you're going to do now that you've finished school. You'll find the answer to that all-important question at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Volunteer in the United States Army now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail star Lee Tracy. The record was written by DeWitt Cox. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. We cordially invite you to join us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail. Our story is entitled Port of Call, Jakarta, and it's a tale of mystery and violence in the fabulous East Indies. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>